Servus and welcome to La French Tech on Air, our European video podcast series on business and technology. In Europe, the 27 French tech community are working together to nurture this tech ecosystem and to support our startups to scale. My name is Karin Fouque. I'm the president of La French Tech Munich and I will be your host and moderator. Today, we are going to talk about growth and merger and acquisition as a go-to-market strategy in the startup ecosystem. We are now in the run for creating European champion among our scale-ups and unicorn with a clear objective in mind, to reach by 2030 10 decacord or tech giant and 100 unicorn, including 25 green tech. And today, I'm thrilled to invite as a guest speaker and to welcome Maximilian Model, the CEO of Sending Blue Germany since 2019 and the former co-founder of Newsletter to Go back in 2013. Hi Max, is from is there of unsere podcast Folge. Bist du bereit? I'm ready. Thank you very much for having me, Karen. S super. Los geht's. So if you want to scale in Europe, yep. you have to be present in France and Germany. And to make the leap to cross the Rhine, usually after a significant fundraising. One way to achieve this goal and to acquire your main competitor in the local country with an M&A in order to gain quicker market share, to join force, to um, develop innovating new features and to accelerate your growth into other international markets. So Flink, the German instant grocery startup, snap up the French Cajou for $93 million in May 2022 this year. Malt acquired the German Comatch to become the biggest freelance marketplace in March 2022. And Koya joined Luco, the number one insurtech in Europe back in January. And exactly two years ago, the 31st January 2019, after raising 30 million in a Serie A, in a Serie a round, Sending Blue acquired his alter ego or doppelganger newsletter to go to build the digital marketing leader in Europe. So Max, why a merger and acquisition versus starting from scratch in order to penetrate the French market? Could you share with us, from your perspective of the acquired company, the objective, the scouting process, and the main steps of this operation till the official announcement? Sure, um, I'm happy to share some, some details or information on that. So I think if you want to um, compete with the US, I think you have to be first very strong in the local market, and the local market is then France or Germany or maybe at a bigger scope, Europe. And at first place, Send and Blue tried to internationalize to, to Germany. Um, and actually, New Seller to Go tried the same. Uh, we also tried to internationalize from Germany to France. And we both did not succeed in a way that uh, we were able to um, acquire a significant market share in, in the other one's market. And back then, the European market was also very fragmented. Uh, so you have a lot of countries and all the countries have a, a local champion mostly. And so that, that's why basically we, we decided to join forces uh, with Sand and Blue to really be able to create one big European player, uh, one very strong European player. And so uh, in August uh, 2018, uh, we basically started the process and um, uh, we got an LOI from Sand and Blue. And then I think in, in December 2018, we, we signed and uh, soon also the closing followed. And that was basically it um, uh, from, from a new set of goal perspective. And from that on, from, from that moment on, we worked together with Stand and Blue to really uh, create a, a big European player. And I think now looking back uh, three years after that almost, I, I think we can really say that we actually achieved that, to, I think today, in the SMB email marketing space, um, we are probably Europeans' uh, most important player. And uh, we still have an exciting journey ahead of us. 
Nice. And actually, so it's interesting. So you mentioned that this merger and acquisition come after as a second attempt after sending Blue and Newsletter to go try respectively to uh, penetrate uh, Germany and France. And just can, can you share with us or um, or do you understand now the reason of this failure uh, of trying to penetrate the market from scratch and share with us some of the lessons learned? Yeah, absolutely. So I think, I mean, we both were startups, right? And as a startup, you have limited resources and you somehow by nature allocate the money where it's most profitable at and um, where it's most prof profitable at is probably your your home market, right? Because you, everything you, you've done is optimized for, I don't know, either France or Germany. And um, and so this was also the case for Santa Blue and also for New Start to go we, we really were like very strong in our home market. And when we tried to internationalize, we of course made some effort, but we didn't really make the effort that probably it would have taken to do and really, um, you know, go abroad, open another office in this country, hire local people there and not try to internationalize from Paris or Berlin and so on. So it's, um, and that's, that's very, that costs a lot of money, right? And if you have, if you are an entrepreneur and you have to decide, okay, what, what will I do? And am I, am I really willing to pay for all the lessons that I have to learn? Or is it maybe even just better if I if I buy a team, a company in this market that brings all this knowledge um, and so on? Then I think that the faster way is actually to to really acquire a company in that space that has all this expertise. Because you buy just so much more than just customers and and uh, and the revenue. You buy the expertise, the lessons learned, the the, the network in this market, and and it takes years to build that. And so basically, uh, so the headquarter of a newsletter to go at the time was based in Berlin and yes. then so after the announcement it became like the headquarter of a sending blue uh, DAG. Yeah. So could you explain like uh, what uh, looked like the first 100 or I would say 200 days um, in terms of integration from infrastructure perspective, uh, cultural and technology? Yeah. Yeah, good question. Let me extend that range to 400 days. <laughs> um, so the first, uh, to be honest, the first 180 days, the first half year was very quiet. In the, in the beginning, we thought we, we don't want to um, um, th change things too fast and uh, just want to first, you know, see how we scope with the new um, situation and so on. And then, but after half a year, we quickly decided that I think it's, that we, we think it's better to really do an integration and to to really create out of those two products two teams and two brands as well like one one big thing um and um so take over the send and blue brand take the best parts from the new Saturo product implement that to the send and blue product plus making the send and blue product more compatible with the local german market and then also of course integrate the team, the new set to go team in new teams in Santa Blue. And we started that process, I think, in September 2019. We kicked it off and we were kind of live in April 2020 and started to onboard the first German customers on the Santa Blue product and changed the branding to from new set to go to Santa Blue. Um, and it was quite, quite a lot, I would say. And um, we involved the whole team in the planning, so we just basically uh, communicated the North Star to have this ambitious goal to be ready in April to to onboard new clients on the Sand and Blue product in Germany, and then we gave the team all the responsibility um, to to work on that and align themselves and 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 build the project to to get it done. And they did a really fantastic job. Um, by then, we didn't build any like every feature from New Start to Go at Sand and Blue, just like really the most important ones and so on. Um, but it was, I think it was working quite well. And what what make the integration particularly difficult is that uh, in, in March 2020, the, the pandemic hit, uh, which made traveling a bit a bit harder. <laughs> and yeah, but still we worked out quite well. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Like uh, Corona was not a good timing, but in a way you had one year and a half uh, to work on this integration. And uh, we know that uh, in merger and acquisition, this integration part is always quite challenging. Um, and 
Can you share with us some of the key success factors uh, of this integration? Uh, you know, maybe to have some practical tool. Uh, did you uh, request the, the support of, of external um, to manage this integration uh, from an investment, investment bank perspective or from a legal requirement? Do you have like any any tools or any uh, key success factor that you can share with uh, with us? Yeah, sure. So at the very beginning at Nusa to Go, we tried to when we started this process, we tried to do it ourselves, and it did not work very well. Um, we then went with an MNA advisor, and that was actually much better and much more professional. So it worked much better. Um, we also had legal support on on the SPA um, for the ones who who sell their company or are in a transaction for the first time, I highly recommend having some professional legal support that did exactly that a couple of times. SBA is a share purchase agreement. And um, also after the transition, after the, the, the deal, so during the integration, we had external support. Uh, we worked with a cultural coach that was specialized on the German and the French culture and um, did some coaching on both sides to just in the first place just create awareness and understanding for for the different cultures and so on because the gap is is bigger than expected i mean it's just uh, across the river basically but it's still like a, a different country with different habits and so on and um, and exactly that helped as well to uh, for the integration along the way yeah, so this external uh, support is, uh, was key in order for you to, to develop this and to uh, manage this integration. We Absolutely. may come back to you to ask for the contact of this sure. uh, <laughs> quick yeah. coach. There are more and more uh, consolidation, there are more and more yeah. innovation, but there are more and also more and more uh, similar solution. And uh, I think that we will see in the near future more and more consolidation. That's totally for sure. Agree. Yeah. And uh, I have a question that I really, really want to ask, and I'm sure the audience would want to ask it. And um, it's regarding leadership in search, uh, merger and acquisition. So for sure, you're an entrepreneur, you make a significant uh, fundraising, and then you're ready to uh, expand um, in a local uh, country. And either you go from scratch and you recruit like a country director, uh, DAR, uh, and set up a team and so on, or you decided to go through a M&A um, acquisition and therefore you exchange shares. And so how does it work? So you go from, you know, being a two founder, one or two founder for, from a company to becoming four founders and who acquired who? How do you work together? Uh, yeah. How do you split the work? Yeah. yeah, that's a good question. So, and that's also something that changed a lot um, after the after the merchant acquisition, after the merge with Santa Blue, basically. So, technically, the it was uh, an acquisition by Santa Blue. So, Santa Blue acquired a hundred percent of the shares of New Seller to Go, um, and the basically the two founders, Christopher Steffen and and me as. Uh, uh, not a founding partner, but someone who came very early in the beginning and building up the, the companies. I had shares as well. Um, we basically became shareholder from Sand and Blue as well. Um, but then uh, we had like more like of a of a general manager role or CEO Germany role where we um, have the ownership about the German market or some specific thing. Um, but of course, we are not like the CEO of Sand and Blue. That's still the founder of, of Sand and Blue. And so our role changed as well, of course. Um, and today it's a metrics organization. Um, and that's also something something different, something you have to get used to work with. But it's it's fine, basically. It, wor it works. Yeah. It works well. For sure it's yeah. down to... Yeah. Uh, some company like uh, Flixbus, um, as we know, have, um, have managed this process uh, pretty well uh, because they acquired quite a lot of company in their expansion um, and they still uh, always manage to remain uh, the main founder. For sure, they were under below the 5 million cap and therefore there were no antitrust issue. But, you know, they were definitely like a good example to keep the, the lead on these uh, things. Absolutely, I think I think it's key to keep um, to keep the founders on board somehow and keep them motivated and, and incentivized because otherwise it can also M and A can be really hard if if like the founders are leaving, um, then it can be very difficult. 
Well, it seems uh, that uh, it was uh, working and a successful strategy for um, for standing blue uh, between uh, France and, and Germany. And uh, after raising uh, another um, fundraising of 160 million in a Serie B in 2020, uh, standing blue recently announced the acquisition of a three additional uh, company in the e-commerce uh, area: uh, Metrilo, Chatra, and Pushol. And they are part of Sending Blue long-term vision to expand uh, their marketing capability and drive into the e-commerce space. And um, now with this acquisition, you are now um, in the process of um, conquering the US market. So my question is, when did you decide and why did you decide to penetrate the US market now? And is there a good time when the company has reached a certain value or market share in Europe before deciding to make uh, that jump? At Sandy Blue, I think we always had this um, this drive or this uh, this wish to go to the US because it's just the biggest market, right? Uh, I mean, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere, um, and. Um, so it was just a question of time. And I think after acquiring New Seller to Go, it was quite clear that we will become the European leader in our space. And of course, we will grow in Europe, but I think our, our base in Europe is quite solid and there's not too much to worry about and, and we will keep on growing. But um, if we just want to think ahead and not only about the growth in the next one or two years, but the growth about the, in the next three, four, five years, then it was very clear that at some point we will have to go to the US um, to, to be able to grow even more. And um, to, your, to your second question, when is a good time? I think it's, there is not like a rule of thumb that you can say, okay, when this happens, you can go to the US, uh, either valuation or something else. I think it's, it's mostly um, a question of strategy. For us, I think it was like, okay, first we um, are successful in Europe. And once that is checked, we can start to think about something else because it's going to the US is, I think, even more expensive than going to Germany because the US is very competitive, I think much more competitive than Germany. Um, you have some, I think, natural disadvantages, um, or let's put it another way, as Europeans, we have a natural advantage in Europe because we are all kind of GDPR compliant um, versus a US company. If we go to the US, this doesn't matter anymore. Um, so I think the US is even more challenging than going to, 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 to Germany, for instance. Well, we wish you like, a lot of success there. Um, Thank you. So now with this new acquisition, uh, Sending Blue um, has about now uh, 500 employees, two additional offices in uh, Bangalore and uh, Sofia. And uh, these two offices are in addition to uh, Seattle, uh, Seattle uh, Paris, Berlin, Noida and uh, Toronto, correct? Yeah, correct. But we are already 650 uh, people. So. Already. OK. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure there is a plan to hire more talent. Absolutely. So we hire um, basically everywhere, uh, mostly, of course, um, in our cities, in the hubs, but also remotely. So if there is talent, we are very much looking forward to onboard new talents um, to help fuel the growth and help us with building this exciting with a vision of becoming more than just an email marketing software, but really a, a CRM. I think there's a lot of um, uh, interesting journey ahead of us. And I think what's very interesting is that we really try to build a CRM that is affordable and much more, much more, much more affordable and accessible to also small businesses than the existing solutions on the market. So in the growth phase, Startups should also think and make sure that diversity, equity, and inclusion are part of the strategy and uh, implement concrete commitments to significantly and sustainability advance gender equality in the French startup ecosystem or the objective of the Pacte Parité that was launched uh, on the 31st of May by La Mission French Tech. The first commitment of this pact are the following to reach a minimum threshold of 25% of women in the board by 2025 and 40% by 2028. To train 100% of the manager on diversity issue and fight against discrimination and harassment by the end of this year. To ensure that 100% of the job description published by the company are open to both men and women 
and last but not least, to set up specific support for each employee returning from parental leave, also by the end of 2022. Currently, this uh, Pact Parité brings to together commitment that have already been signed by 69 companies, including more than half of the next 40, and uh, French Tech 20, including Sending Blue. So first of all, um, it's great that you are taking part of this uh, uh, Pact Parité. Uh, it also, for me, uh, feels very important. Uh, to, to make this commitment in such a gross phase. Can you um, tell us a little bit more about the Sending Blue long-term plan um, on, this, uh, on this topic and how, how do you implement it in the DAR region? I, I think it's a great, great thing to do because it really um, manifests the, the diversity and uh, equality. So I think that's, uh, the, it's really the right thing to do. And um, I think we are already on a pretty good track on, on, on that. Um, so speaking for Senate Blue Global, um, I think we reached already the 20% um, women uh, on the board, so which is very good. And uh, I'm, I'm also very positive that by 2028, we will reach the 40%. And as well for the anti-harassment training, um, by default, all the managers and team leads um, get a training at Sand and Blue, and they have to have to do it within the first, I don't know, three three months of the onboarding. Um, so we implemented that as well. And um, yeah, so for DACH, actually, speaking for um, Sand and Blue Germany, um, we have a lot of... Uh, uh, women leaders or women in leadership positions in the bottom office and um, they are doing a fantastic job um, really all of them so um, uh, we exceeded uh, there are probably more women than the men <laughs> in leadership positions in Berlin so we exceeded this uh, already yeah. and uh, we heard that uh, you, you recently announced the recruitment of Laure Rudel Arnaud who will be like chief people and impact officer with a mission of uh, structuring talent management, developing the employee brand and promoting diversity, equity and inclusion. And I guess this kind of a position, uh, you know, will be more and more uh, key uh, to any uh, structure uh, and organization um, of any startups. Absolutely. Laura has a key position at this company, um, being the chief, chief of people and impact. Uh, she, she leverages basically 650 people and making sure that everybody uh, is not only productive, but also really, really happy and uh, feels good. And um, so it's a very important position. And also the impact part is, is important for us to um, have a lot of diversity, equity and inclusion, of course, and become a real employer brand that, that employers also really love. And uh, yeah, so she has a very exciting job. Nice. We wish her all the success. And uh, before we close uh, this uh, podcast, uh, I wanted to ask you if you have, you know, any kind of like a uh, last word or last message you want to deliver um, to any entrepreneur uh, going through a gross phase. Uh, but also, uh, you know, this podcast will be shared among all the French tech uh, in Europe. And so maybe also to uh, any other French tech um, who will listen okay. to this podcast? Um, yeah, can I have more than one message? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I've already given two audience, so please do. <laughs> okay, okay, thank you. So first of all, um, Sand and Blue is still on the lookout to acquire more more uh, companies. So if you if you think that it could be a good fit between between um, you your company and Sand and Blue, then uh, please feel free to to reach out to us. Um, and second of all, I think. Um, fostering the European thought, um, it's really it would be really good, and I would love to see that more to have more M and A between France and Germany as well, because it's uh, probably one of the most important European markets to really create big European players that really are able to compete with with the big players in the US. Because I had the feeling in the past like we were too busy fighting for our small fences in Europe than really taking the big step to the US. And But I think that we can only achieve if we have strong European leadership. And that's why I'm, I think the, the initiative um, from French Tech Munich and French Tech in general is a very good one to really join forces. Okay, Max, we're definitely uh, looking forward to seeing you uh, in September at Bitten Pretzel. Keep this date in mind, 25th to 27th, two day in exhibition hall and one day at Oktoberfest. We will have a French corner of 600 square meters and a dedicated stage. 
we are welcoming um, our scale up and uh, unicorn as exhibitor just to give you a few names Conto, Spandex, Malt, United, Mim, um, Play Play, and many more will be there. Well, whether we talked about uh, growth or inclusion, Sending Blue is a very good example. And uh, we really hope that the company to become one of our decacorn uh, at some point. Definitely a European champion. Make sure you can count on the support of La French Tech and every capital in Europe, uh, definitely Munich, but also in the US and all over the world to support you further. Thank you very much for sharing this, your journey and uh, stay tuned with La French Tech on Air. Servus!